and we're back. Uh, you might have thought I was dead. Um, I think I did too for a while. It has been about four months since the last video. So that's well over, well, about 120 days since the last upload. Quite a while. But we're back finally with another video and we need to wrap up this uh, mini series on the basics. So you may remember in the last video we had this little admin script we wrote. Now we're going to extend on that a bit. Uh, we've got, got a lot to cover in this video because we're going to try and wrap it all up into this final video and then we're going to move on to some new content hopefully. So we've got this admin script here. Now there's one problem with it that you may have realized back in the previous video, which is that if I want to have another admin, then I might need to keep writing more and more if statements. If the another admin say called Builderman, then I need a new line of if statements each time I want to add another admin, or I've got to add them all on here, I've got to say, or and I had a, another one there, and it all starts to look very messy, and you can't really tell what this code is doing. So allow me to present my solution. Now, instead of using variables, and we could use a variable for this here, we could say if equals admin, and then we could have an admin variable up here and the admin variable equal the text. So that would be exactly the same as what we had before. But instead of just a variable, we could have something called a table. Now a table is an interesting thing as it allows you to store multiple values. So if a variable is like a box that you can store one item in, then you can think of a table as like a whole shelving unit that you can store multiple boxes inside. So you define a table just like you would a variable, but you surround it with these little curly brackets. And then once you've written down one value, like I have there, known code, I simply type a comma, and then I can add a whole other variable, a whole other value, sorry. And so then I can write down Builderman and they're both contained within this admin, uh, this admin table. And clearly this is much easier than writing admin, admin one equals name code. And then I'd need to have another variable there, admin two equals builderman. And have to have all these different variables Whereas now, I just have both of them contained within the one, the one table, which is called admin. Now, how do we reference things from this table that we've created? Well, we're actually going to need something a bit different to an if statement. Because the if statement is going to check if it equals admin. And admin has multiple values now, so clearly that's not going to work. In fact, let's just comment this out for now. We can do a comment block by doing two dashes, two left square brackets, and then we do the same underneath it, another two dashes, another two square brackets, and that comments that whole block off. So when the, we run the game now, nothing will happen at all. That admin script won't even run. So what happens if we print out the value of admin. What do we get? Well, if we just run the game, you'll see we get table and we get this long hex code after it. And that's a bit weird, isn't it? You think, well, where are these values? Well, that's because now admin isn't simply equal to one value, it's equal to this entire data structure. So if we want to access an individual element from the table, we have to reference the location of it within admin. And you do that using two square brackets and inside of it, you give it a number. So if I type the number one, I'm saying go to admin 
and then find the first element within that table. So if I run now, it's printed name code. And if I put the same, but with uh, two, the second element, and I run that, it's printed out Builderman for me. So that's pretty useful. Now, if we wanted to cycle through both, we could maybe use a while loop. So we could say uh, while, and we need we need a, a counter variable, counter equals uh, one, and we could say while one is less than uh, three, do print admin square bracket counter the value of counter so on the first run through this will be equal to one and then the second run through we want to change the value so we're going to say counter equals counter plus one and then it, the counter will be equal to two so then it's going to run through again it's going to print the second element which is going to be builderman and then it's going to add it another value to a counter so the counter is going to equal three and then it's going to get back up the top and because three is not less than three it will stop so let's just run the code check that works and we'll wait for that to compile oh is it going to crash that's interesting game script timeout wait 0 0.1 is there something like that that's okay let's just add a little wait in so we can see ah okay so it keeps printing out nil so the reason for this well one oh ugh. stupid mistake <laughs> right very stupid mistake so I've typed one here instead of counter. I don't know why I did that. So clearly counter, it, we need to say counter, not, not the value of counter. Counter, the object, the variable counter. Well, counter is less than three and then run it. Right, there we go. So we've got gnome code and builderman. You see, never be phased by uh, errors in code. It's normally just you being stupid most of the time. And I was being pretty stupid there. Luckily, I was able to solve it fairly quickly. Right, so now we've got this. Now, a while loop isn't really that suited to this kind of operation. You see, it's a bit messy. We've got all these lines here, and coding's all about efficiency and making it clear what you want to do. And this is a bit confusing. So let's introduce another type of loop called a for loop. Now for loops are very similar to while loops, but they have the advantage of they're very useful for if you just want a loop to run for a set amount of times like we did with that while loop we just created. So with a for loop, you create a variable inside of the loop. So you say for i equals one. So this is like that counter variable we use for the while loop. For i equals one, comma two do and then we're going to say print and we're just going to print out the value of i and if we run that we've got one and two so what this does is it sets a local variable with a value of one and then after every loop of the for loop it adds another one to i until the value is two. So in this case, it only does it twice. We could set it to be 10 and it would do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And if we run it, that's what we've got. Okay, so how is this useful for our table? Well, we could just say two and then print admin and in the square brackets i. But if we add new values to the table, then that's going to become problematic because we're not going to get to this third user, Sagzidi. So there's a new way of doing this, which is um, use a hash and then type the name of the table, admin, 
and that equals the amount of elements within the table. So we can just test that quickly. If I put print hash admin and I run that, we'll just comment this out for now just to show you. And we run that print hash admin, we've got two. And if we run it again with our random letters in and we run that, we've got three. So now we know we can cycle through the table using hash admin. Perfect. So if we uh, ran that, that would of course work. You know, code and Builderman just as before. And if we head back to this code that we commented out earlier, what we're going to need to do is enclose this if function inside a for loop. So let's add a new line here and we're going to say for i equals one comma hashtag admin just like there do and then we want to run this if and we're going to check if player.name equals admin square bracket i then print admin has joined the game end the if end the for loop and we'll just uh, select all that and press tab so it's nicely indented you should always uh, indent your code with tabs it makes it much easier to read so now what should be happening is it should check it will go and to see if our name equals the first value of the table and if it doesn't then it will go and it will check if our name equals the second value of the table so let's add a bunch of uh, new values in just to test this out uh, that's probably good enough just a bunch of keyboard gibberish and whenever we go around the loop I'm gonna print wrap print out uh, loop just so we know what the code is doing and if we run that oh, of course I need to join the game join the game play and we've got loop times three admin has joined the game because I am the uh, third value and then it's done one more loop because it was still looking so at that point we can actually add uh, a break in and that will stop it looping once more I think so if we try that one more time yeah then admin has joined the game we haven't got another loop so this break keyword um, that just stops it going for another loop in this instance it doesn't really matter but if you had a lot of processing going on then you might not want it to waste uh, waste time trying to calculate stuff inside another loop when we just want to break out of that loop stop the loop because an admin has joined the game okay so that should give you an idea of uh, loops and tables and we could even have another if statement here actually uh, we could say else if player dot name equals uh, band and we can have a band list then then do something and then we'd have to break that end again so what about we have another table up here and we say band equals and we'll say uh, let's add myself to the band list eh? and remove myself from the admin list and then if I am banned then we can actually kick that player so we type player colon and we call the function kick and because it's a function we have two brackets and if we run that hopefully when I join the game you were kicked from this game unspecified reason and uh, that's because this function it actually takes an argument or a parameter just like a print statement does for example inside here we can add two little quotation marks and we can write in 
uh, name code isn't allowed in this game, which would be a bit weird seeing as I created the game, but that's something we can do. If we run that now, uh, you kicked from this game, no code isn't allowed in this game. Oh, awful. I hope you don't do that in your games. I'd be very sad if you did. So that about brings us to the end of for loops uh, and tables. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea of what they can be used for, how to use them with this little functional example. Um, if you'd like me to explore these more, I can do, well, I probably will do. But I think that brings us to the end of these Lua basics. Whereas now I want to move on to some more practical uh, game making applications of all these techniques we've learned so far. So hopefully you'll catch me then. Thanks very much. Subscribe, like. Uh, oh, I'm not allowed to say subscribe to PewDiePie anymore. That's banned. But thank you very much. See you next time.